Taking a screenshot on your iPhone is very simple, but you can use that for a lot of different reasons. And there's even some advanced features buried in the iPhone settings that allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. I'm Jason Cipriani, and in this ZDNet how-to video, I'm gonna walk you through taking screenshots on your iPhone and all the extra tools that come along with it. Let's cover the basics, let's start there right? The simple task of taking a screenshot. The process varies depending on what kind of iPhone you have. I only happen to have newer iPhone models on hand that have Face ID and lack a home button. But I'm going to cover both methods for you here in just a second. So on a Face ID iPhone, the process is simple. You press the side button and the top volume button, the volume up button at the same time. Real quick release. I'll do it again. And you can hear the shutter sound one more time. And then also you'll see on the screen, there's a small thumbnail that's shown in the bottom left hand corner. You can keep taking screenshots if you're in an app and you're walking someone through steps or you're scrolling and taking pictures or taking screenshots, say of a conversation, whatever it is. When you take screenshots and that thumbnail is still present on the screen, that thumbnail will not show up in the screenshots, which is nice. That's something that Android doesn't do. If that thumbnail is present, it's also present in the screenshot, which is kind of a bummer, right? All right, so that's a basic task. If you have an iPhone with a home button, you press the home button and the side button at the same time, and there's your screenshot, same process afterwards. I just mentioned taking a scrollable screenshot or taking a screenshot of a conversation, multiple screenshots. Uh, in order to capture that conversation, but built into the iPhone screenshot tool is the ability to take a scrollable screenshot. And so what I mean by that is one long screenshot, let's say of a web page, you can even do it in the mail app of an email thread or even in a document in the files app. You can't do it in apps like Slack or Facebook Messenger or even messages to capture conversations. You have to take multiple screenshots and I'll include an app at the end of this that will actually paste or combine those for you. But let's tackle the built-in scrollable screenshot method. So I'm going to open up Safari and I'm on ZDNet's homepage here. I'm going to take a screenshot using the method we just covered. But instead of taking another screenshot, I'm going to open the thumbnail. And so at the top of the screen here, there are two options, two tabs. There's screen and full page. I'm going to switch over to the full page option. And here on the right side, you can see that it has captured the entire web page that I can then scroll down and see what that screenshot looks like. Now I have an option here. I can tap on the crop button and crop down if I don't want that entire page or if it's an email thread, you don't want the entire email thread and I can make it smaller. I'm going to hit done. Now that I have a shorter scrollable screenshot, I'm going to hit done again to save it. And you have one option here, and that is to save it as a PDF to the files app. This is no longer an image. It's saved as a PDF. And the same goes for if you were viewing a Word document or a text file or an email. You save these scrollable screenshots as PDF files. I can copy and delete it, or I can just delete it all together, as well as tap the share button to do what I want. But the point is, scrollable screenshots, they're a thing, they're possible, and they save as PDFs. Pretty cool. The next tool I'm gonna to cover that involves screenshots is actually not screenshots itself, but the ability to record whatever is on your iPhone screen, so screen recording. This is something that's built in, but unless you use Control Center or know where to look, you would never know it was available. So before we turn it on, what you need to do is go into settings, scroll down to control center, and then there'll be a list of different options. You wanna find the screen recording option and tap on it if it has a green plus icon next to it. If it's already in the list of included controls, you're good. You don't worry about it. All right, so go back to your home screen, whatever app you're gonna record your screen in, and now you'll need to pull up control center on an iPhone that doesn't have a uh, home button, what you'll do is swipe down from the top right corner. If you have a home button on your phone, you swipe up from the bottom. Either way, you're in control center, and then you're going to find the screen recording button, which is in the middle of your screen right there. It's the bottom. 
it's that round circle icon with the dot inside of it. And then you're gonna tap on it. And there's a countdown that happens, it's three, two, one, and then it turns red to let you know it's recording. That means whatever happens on your display, notifi notifications included, will be captured by the screen recording. So be very careful of what content you're capturing. And if you're having a conversation with someone and all of a sudden you are recording your screen, you may not want that conversation to be included. So what you can do is put your phone in do not disturb to stop notifications from showing up while you're screen recording. However, that's easy enough, right? There is a more advanced feature of screen recording that you'll wanna check out. And that happens when you long press on that screen recording button, you get a new screen that asks you where you want the file to be saved. There's a whole list of apps here, including like Twitch and Slack, Instagram, Facebook, Discord. You could live broadcast your display to. I haven't taken the time to set up any of those apps for this specific feature, but if you do, like for example, in Slack, if you're in a huddle with teammates or friends or colleagues, whatever, you're able to share your screen directly to the Slack app in your huddle, which is pretty cool. I, I didn't realize Slack supported that. Uh, until I was working on this and, and I noticed it. But there's also a button here at the bottom called microphone. Um, and you can hit that button to turn it red, like that. Or you could hit it to leave it off. And what that does is it uses your iPhone's microphone to record your voice or whatever background noise there is while you go through the screen recording. That means if you're narrating a video and walking someone through a task, or maybe you experienced a random bug that you want to show an app developer, you can then go through that process, trigger the bug, and also notate what exactly is going on using your voice, which is super cool. All right, so once you start a recording, you'll notice that the on newer iPhones, the top corner show, turns red, like where the time normally is. On older iPhones, the status bar across the top turns red overall. If you want to stop the recording, all you do is tap on that. The red is there to let you know your screen is being recorded. It's a handy privacy related feature, but it also serves as a shortcut to stop recording. So I'll hit stop on the prompt that comes up and now everything is saved into my photos app. Your screenshots you took are saved in your photos app. The recording, as long as photos was selected to the app that you wanted to send it to, is saved in the photos app as well. You can edit and share them directly from there. Now earlier I mentioned scrollable screenshots and not working in messages and there being an app that allows that or will actually combine your screenshots into one long image. The app I use is called Taylor. I'll include a link in the description so you can get that. It's a free app. You can unlock or remove the watermark that's placed at the bottom of your screenshot, your combined screenshot. I think it's like two or three bucks. I've never had a problem with leaving it there though, because who cares? It does a good job. The key there is though, is to take multiple screenshots where some of the information or images overlap so that the app itself can analyze it and overlay them and line them up properly. It's a pretty cool app something I use not often, but when I need to, it's, it's there and it's something I've used over the years quite a bit. All right, so that's how to take a screenshot, how to take a scrolling screenshot and use some of those advanced features, as well as screen recording and the hidden settings menu that you don't really know is there unless you accidentally long press on the recording button. Hopefully that covers everything for you and, and you don't have any questions left after that. I'm Jason Cipriani. Thanks for watching this ZDNet how-to video. Make sure to check out ZDNet.com for more tips just like this one, as well as all the latest tech news and reviews.